Hey guys, gals, and NBs, I'm here today with the Korg Wave State Mark II, and uh, this video is going to be a little bit on the shorter side, I, just a little bit, uh, compared to what I've been doing recently. And I should preface this by saying that this will affect all of the models, not just the Mark II, the Mark I, the SE, the module version, and yeah, so forth. Uh, because none of the versions really um, change all that much other than polyphony. This has 96 voices of polyphony. They really should have put 128 on this version because the SE and the modules using the same damn processors are 128. At least as far as I know, they're using the same uh, Raspberry Pi compute module. It is a significant increase over the 64 on the um, last version. And for me, that's a big deal because if you use wave sequencing, you cut your voice account in half. And then, you know, if you each layer keeps halving your voice count. So you can go down to eight voices on the original if you have wave sequencing and so forth. That said, this video is going to be mostly about the reverb section. So one of the things I didn't know is in version 2.0, since I had a version, I had a original wave state and I had them about when they were launched. And I absolutely love that. But um, I sold it recently to get a Mark II whenever they were available. I was going to get a module, but I, I ended up with the keyboard. The modules were just taking too long, and I really missed the feature set and sound of this thing. But as of version 2, and this affects all of them, you can go using the editor and edit the reverb. And the one thing I will say, this is probably the best, one of the best reverbs I've ever heard in a synth period. Um, the reverb algorithm we're going to be talking about today is called the Overb, and I believe that stands for Oasis Reverb. So it initially debuted on the Oasis Workstation, which is basically just an overglorified Linux computer in a large and heavy, you know, keyboard chassis. But it had some pretty cool software, and the reverb apparently sounded very good. I can say that the reverb on this is like, it's excellent. The only other one, I would say that the peak is about on par with this. It's not better, it's not worse. So yeah, let's get into it. So I used the editor and you can see here, there's a bunch of parameters you don't get on the front panel. One of the biggest ones was pre-delay and I wanted to turn that all the way down for ambient patches and things like that. So it, at least in my, um, you can save the reverb presets individually. And I made one with a bunch of diffusion, a uh, good amount of dampening, a long time, and a few like macros that you can change like size and time. And we'll, we'll get into it. We'll get into what you can change. So we're going to make this really simple. We're going to put this into basically a rompler mode instead of the wave sequencing. So you want to click the select button here. You go up to where it says wave sequence and you turn it into single multi-sample. And now this thing is a multi-sample playback device. And a very good one in that with four layers by here. So yeah, we, we get a piano by default when you switch it to that mode. And we're gonna go ahead and keep that for our first one to really like listen to this. All right, the uh, let's go in here and change the amp envelope to be a little longer on the release. We'll go here. I mean, it already sounds fantastic. Let's go ahead and add another layer to this. So double click to turn it on. Let's switch it back over here. We're gonna go back into the uh, single multi-sample. We're going to choose the damper. So let's listen to the damper. Let's turn off layer one. Here's the damper. Okay, let's shape the damper. Oops, I am on the wrong layer. All right. Nice. And then we're going to add our first layer here. Let's go back to our second layer and maybe make the release a little shorter. All right. 
it's sounding fantastic, right? Just by itself. I mean, the samples in this thing are just fantastic. And you can load your own, obviously. So, well, not obviously. I should say that's a, as a version 2.0 on all of them. All right. So let's go into the reverb section. We're going to choose the one that I made, which is going to be called Noodle Dragon, and it's kind of just one I make on a lot of reverbs. It's supposed to have long reverb tails, um, and it's supposed to be very dense and just just modulated and just nice. And go ahead, it's turned on now, and this is what we get by the default. Try. All right, let's go ahead and shape some of the parameters. So like I said, I went ahead and uh, turned up the diffusion to like some crazy amount. Time is cranked up um, and uh, we have the pre-decay all the way at zero. So this is perfect for ambient pads and things like that, just for anything, really. I made it try to be an all-arounder, but let's turn up the size. Turn the size all the way up. I mean, it already sounds great, doesn't it? All right, let's go ahead and uh, the timbre I have set to the modulation depth. I have the modulation set to the speed that I really like, but yeah, let's hear. Listen to the tails. Let's turn up the time a little so you can really hear that. Turn the time way up. But yeah, let's, let's keep it right around there. Okay, so no mod. See how static those tails sound? I mean, it still sounds good. The diffusion uh, algorithm on this, or the method that they do the diffusion on this, actually is very, very good in my opinion. So let's turn the depth all the way up. That's where I like it. All right, let's go to layer one. And one of the very cool things, so, I, I showed you up on the screen. I'll just bring it back up here again. You can go and you can just edit so many parameters. That goes for all of the effects. That goes for the modulation, the pre-effects, and the delays. I'm just going to use some of the built-in delays. I really like using the tape delay, for instance. So we're going to go over here. So the only the bad thing about this synth is almost all of the really cool settings for any of the effects are stuck behind the editor. That's why I'm going to call this video like something, the secret that lies in the wave state or something along those lines, because there's so much you can do with the effects section that isn't, isn't in the menu. I mean, we got a beautiful OLED screen. Just let us have like an advanced menu feature to edit that stuff. I know it would be a pain in the ass, but just, just do it, Korg. I don't want to use the damn editor. I mean, the editor's not bad, but that's the whole thing. I do a lot of DALA stuff because I don't want to be stuck to a computer. But yeah, um, let's just, let's turn off the reverb and let's go ahead and go back to delay. So one thing I should say, each layer has its own delay, mod effects and pre effects. The reverb is global and then there's a master EQ as well. That's also global. But each of the layers can have its own delay algorithm and times and all of that. And that, that's just amazing. All right, so we're gonna do one head tape. We're just gonna, we're gonna do a 50-50. We're just gonna use the default settings. Why not, right? I think you have, yeah, you have time feedback and uh, timbre. Let's, let's add a little more feedback. Let's turn on our reverb and let's just hear the magic of that reverb with a delay as well. All right, let's go to here and we're going to turn down the mix. We're going to turn it around 3268. 
So 32% of uh, reverb signal and then 68 dry percent, of course. on our, our piano. That's, that's just gorgeous, isn't it? Like I said before, I always liked the reverb on this thing, but it, it was just so... Uh, until I, I wish Korg advertised it like out on the open that said... I mean, they kind of do in the editor. It says, oh, you can make your own uh, presets for the effects. Uh, but also, just far more update the damn thing so you can do it on the unit. I hate being stuck with software on a hardware synth to make part of its features fully work. The software won't be available forever, for even if it's archived. It's going to be a pain in the ass to use down the line, especially on Mac OS when they change, you know, the different environments for you to be able to access it and things like that. You're going to have to boot a legacy operating system down the line, things like that. I, I just hate hardware synths that rely on software to fully get the full usage out of them. But yeah. All right. Well, you know, that's not all we're going to do today. We're going to go ahead and listen to that on a string patch, too. Let's go back to an init program. Huh. All right. Let's go here. We're going to... Oops. We did that wrong, didn't we? Let's do this. We're going to go over here to... Oh, I'm, I'm not having a good time here with this. Okay. Let's go to perform... Let's go to an init patch, go to here. We gotta go up here, right? Single multi-sample, all right. Gets, uh, it, you, you really have to get used to the menuing system on this. I, I get why they have an editor, but still. All right, we're gonna use strings. So strings are right around here. Let's use strings, uh, chamber strings two. I love that one. And we're going to go ahead and go to the amp. We're going to do a nice attack. Let's add some decay. I should state that practically everything is per layer. That includes the filters. So if we want to add a little bit of filtering, we can, which I'm going to do. That'll be a pad for our pad. That's a, <laughs> the weirdest way I'm going to put it because we're going to put another section of strings on top of it. If you notice that the panning is really weird on this patch, yeah, it seems like lower notes are on the right channel and then upper notes are on the left channel. I shouldn't say patch, but on the sample bank for this. I love those strings, they just sound so gorgeous. All right, I'm getting ahead of myself here. We're having too much fun. So let's go ahead and turn on a second layer. We're gonna go into select. We're gonna change that to single multi-sample. We're gonna go over to strings. I always pass them so quick because it does have velocity sensitivity on the knobs the quicker you turn it. We're going to use String quartet and uh, VIB, which means vibrato, so there's uh, vibrato to the strings. Let's go ahead and just turn off one. But it's nice. It's a delayed vibrato. You can hear that in a second here. So if I hold down 
listen to the attack. There's going to be no vibrato, but at the end there will be. All right, let's go ahead. Let's add some attack to that. Just a little. Let's go back to this. We're going to have this come in quite a bit later. So let's turn that off. Go back in here. Turn on layer white. All right, cool. We're going to go back to layer two. We're going to give its own delay effect. We're going to use LCR. Let's do that. That's cool. Let's uh, choose a different one. We're going to go into here for the presets. Yeah, we're going to choose. That's a good one. The DDL left, right. Turn up the wet mix, it should be 50 50. Yep, sure. Let's go in and change the timbre a little. It's like your tone control, that's what it's mapped to. Gives it a nice amount of smear and movement. Let's give it a little bit of feedback. Maybe not that much. Let's hear it out of the lower register. Cool. And we wanna we wanna keep the filter wide open probably for this. Let's go to turn it up. Maybe not. Maybe the light there. Nah. We do want to keep it open. Maybe not. Like I said, I keep going back and forth. That's good. Oof, maybe. that'll do all right let's go ahead and go back to layer one we're gonna turn on just layer one it's nice and mellow let's go ahead and add a delay to this and we're going to use a tape delay on this one whoops let's go back here go here go to tape echo we're gonna use uh one head we're gonna turn it up to 50 50 as well Let's go ahead and turn the time way up. You can hear the artifacting there. That sounds beautiful. We still haven't even added our reverb yet, which we will in a second. Now let's combine both layers. Go ahead there here, and we're going to go ahead and, yeah, I guess we will take it down a little bit. And now we want to bring down the, uh, the volume on that a little bit. So to do that, I believe we're going to perform, yeah, and then we change this. Let's change the, the B layer down a little. That's nice, okay. Now let's go ahead and engage our reverb. We're gonna go to my Noodle Dragon, because everybody loves Noodle Dragons. Okay, let's turn up the size all the way. Let's crank the size. Let's crank the time. Let's crank the, the modulation. And let's bring down the wet dry to Right around there. All right. And here, be ready to be blown away by this. Actually, 
actually want to take down or bring up the, uh, yeah, it was a little too low. It sounds better with the reverb, so it kind of tames it. get into playing something fun, all right? Let's try this. Let's bring it a little more and let's make it a little slower, shall we? Now, before I uh, play too much more of that, I'm going to go in and we're going to see actually how much voices we are using because I always complained that the original didn't have enough voices, even though on paper you think, think 64. Ooh, that's so many voices. What are you complaining about? But no. Alright, fine. Well, I guess I wasn't pushing that many voices, but that's only two layers. Imagine four and then you half the amount of voices you get because you basically double up when you turn on wave sequencing. I'm not using wave sequencing. I'm literally just using the rompler portion of it. But God, does that sound amazing. Now 
let's make it even funner. Let's 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 funner. Anyway, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna add a choir. We're gonna add a tape choir, like a Meltron tape choir. All right, so let's do that. Let's go to voice vocal V V. That's wind. Wind. This has a lot of wind to it. Um. Yeah. Why is why is it when I want to do this always on camera? I can not forget. Oh, there it is. Huh. All right. So we'll use the Tape Boy Choir. It sounds really nice on lower registers. Um, yeah, let's let's do that. Let's listen to that really quick. Oh, we're in the wrong damn section again. I always do that. Okay, that's fine. We'll bring it in like right there. filter yeah so that's cool all right let's bring it all together to the amount of voices we're using now. Still not too bad. We have a little bit more release on that. Well, that's way too much release. All right. There we go. Now we're using some voices. nice long release on the choir portion yeah i think it sounds absolutely stunning i i i mean tell me what you think do you think this sounds awesome do you think that the reverb is as like as good as i say that i've where i feel it is i shouldn't say that but you know what i mean um I feel it's like literally one of the best, if not the best, reverb on a synth, especially when it comes to the amount of parameters that you unfortunately have to use the damn editor for. But that said, you get a lot of parameters. It's not like a fancy shimmer reverb or things like that. But, you know, it's it's 2024. Do people really care about shimmer reverb all that much outside of certain, um, let's say, uh, demographics? I was going to poke fun at the praise and worship community because you know that's low-hanging fruit but yeah uh, it it's a great reverb it sounds phenomenal with the samples on here and you can shape a lot and especially having a delay per layer just you can make some amazing things this is one of the few synths i can just pull out and use without external reverb or external effects the delays are actually pretty wonderful on this as well i mean it's not like a you know what? You can use it instead of like a Big Sky MX. Uh, the Big Sky MX does have some more algorithms that are a little more in tune with uh, making huge ambient pads like the uh, Cloud and the Bloom mixed together. There's nothing in here that can really do that, especially with the extra added harmonics you can add. But yeah, that said, it, it is passable. It's not even just serviceable for practice or something. 
it's serviceable for recording, and I, I've done that in the past with this. I mean, I love using pedals with this thing, but that said, I think I'm going to call it there, and I just wanted to really share my excitement with how good the reverb sounds on this and just how fun this is to use as a rompler. We didn't even get into the wave sequencing. I will make potentially a video on the wave sequencing. It is a pain in the ass to set up and explain to people, but I can go over some patches and stuff like that. I hope that gives you some, like, um, what's the word? Um, oh, just inspiration there. That's what I'm grasping for. Inspiration to make your own patches for any of the wave states. It goes for Generation 1 to the Mark II, and I really wish you could easily get the SE in the U.S. because... I think this is one of those synths that I could see using a larger key bed for. I really should have waited for the module and gotten a big key bed, but, you know, I heard that the key bed on the uh, larger the SE is actually pretty damn good. Maybe I will look at seeing if there's a retailer out there that, um, you know, I can buy one from. Given I have used the Wave State in so much of my music if you go back through my channel. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do so. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time. Bye.